What's up, you guys? It's your boy, JT. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so it's able to reach other people to know how to pass step one. So what I'm going to give you guys today is just some things that I did in order to pass step one in order so that you guys are able to pass step one. All right, you guys, before I get into it, I want to make sure you guys know how long you should expect to study for in order to pass step one. From my experience, people that get anywhere from 73 to an 80 percent, they take anywhere from three months to six months in order to feel comfortable to sit for the exam and pass. Those that are, are around the 81 percent to a 90 percent. They take anywhere from two months to three months to study for the exam. And those who have an overall GPA of 91 to 100 percent, they take the traditional four weeks to eight weeks in order to sit for the real exam. So this video is intended for those who are just like average, you know, like 85 percent and below. You know, if you are here and you're trying to get like a, a 250 on your MBME or something, this video isn't for you. Um, I'm here to help the people that are struggling to get a passing score. So um, if you know anyone, send them my way. This video is designed for that student who is struggling to get a passing score. And I was one of the students. So I'm going to share with you guys a couple things that I did throughout my study, throughout my study prep. Um, and hopefully you can utilize some of these techniques, some of these resources in order to pa pass the step one exam. A bit about my journey through the step one exam. Um, I got done with my basic sciences in May of 2023, and I didn't sit for the exam until October 26, 2023. My program didn't allow me to start clinicals um, until I have a passing score. So I actually had to take a leave of absence in order to feel well or to feel prepared in order to sit for the real exam. But thankfully I took it and two weeks later, I opened up my results and I saw a pass. So I was really encouraged when I saw my, my passing score. All right, so the first thing that I did and I recommend to students is I took a self-assessment. Stick around to the end to see exactly all of my scores on UWorld world self-assessment and MBMEs towards the end in order to see how I did. And maybe you can have a good idea of what you need to be aiming for um, in order to pass for the real exam. So I took my first you world self-assessment back in May and I did not do well. So that's the first thing you have to do um, in order to uh, start studying for the real exam. If your um, first self-assessment is at a 65% raw score percentage correct uh, or lower, you're probably going to want to focus more on content review rather than just question bank based. Whereas if you're starting score is above a 65% um, at or above a 65% or greater raw score, um, then you're probably going to want to start off with a more question bank review rather than a content review. So that's the first step. Just know where you stand in order to move on to the, to the second phase of studying. So this first thing you got to do is take a self-assessment. So as far as the content and the resources that I used in order to pass step one, it was Hi Guru, um, who was ran by a, a pediatric critical care fellow. Um, he is a wonderful teacher and educator. His name is Dr. Rahul Demania, and he um, is just a wonderful educator. Check him out on his website, HiGuru.com. He also has a lot of free resources on YouTube. He is so great at explaining super hard topics and he narrows it down and he also encourages you along the way. And I really appreciate that. So for my content review, that's what I did was I just basically did all of High Guru. This pass fail course specifically is super key for you to pass your step one exam. And he just gives you all the basic fundamentals that you need to know in order to pass. So definitely check him out for your content review. He goes through every single system every single high yield thing that you pretty much need to know for the real exam. And I took the real exam and I'm telling you not, and I kid you not, the things that I learned from High Guru's pass fail course definitely helped me pass my step one exam. For a question bank, I used Your World. Um, it was about 3,500 questions, give or take. I was able to get through Your World, all of Your World, um, and I was able to go through all of my incorrects as well. In a perfect world, you're going to want to do U World twice in order to sit comfortably for the USMLE Step 1. But for me, I just 
I just didn't do that. I wasn't able to do that. Um, that's a lot of practice questions. Uh, so definitely you're going to want to utilize uh, UWorld or Amboss. They're both pretty equal as far as their caliber of uh, practice questions. But for me, UWorld was free, well, not free, free, but it came with my uh, with my school. They gave us a subscription to it. And last but not least, I utilized a lot of the MBME's self-assessments. Now, there are, there are some Reddit documents that have like retired MBMEs out there, but for me, the questions and answer bank didn't line up and I would have to like manually look for the answer and manually look for the same question. So for me, I just paid the fee of about $60 for each self-assessment, which actually ended up to be quite a significant amount. But for me, it was just worth it because not only do they give you the, the question and the answers and the explanations, but they also kind of give you like a breakdown of like where you went well, where you went wrong, um, as far as all that other stuff. So you can find that on the MBME's uh, website. So just to reiterate, the content that I did was Hi Guru for my content review, uh, You World for my practice questions, and the MBME self assessments. That's it. Yes, I did use first aid for a couple things like immunodeficiencies. Like I like to have table and I'm a, I'm a visual learner. And yes, I did use sketchy and picturize from time to time, but they weren't part of my everyday natural uh, rhythm uh, routine schedule. So I kind of just want to go through my my schedule and what it looked like so that maybe you can kind of pick and choose what you like from that. But I think it's a pretty easy and basic uh, schedule to go off of so i would wake up around seven o'clock i would meditate I would pray i would go through my bible and i would start the day off around eight o'clock so eight in the morning i would go ahead and start with my high guru and i would specifically go through the things that i struggled with so i went through nephrology and cardiology probably like three or four times um so i would start with the things that i was struggling most with and i would copy and paste so each video with high guru goes with like you world self-assessment as well as amboss and different question banks um question ids on the bottom of the of the of the video so i would copy and paste the questions id from the bottom and i would put it onto the you world's little like question id to like customize and make your own um quizzes and stuff while I was going through the videos. And what I felt, what I found was Hi Guru is great with like giving you a lot of questions, but that's the thing, it's too many questions for not that many videos. So what I would do instead of copying and pasting, you know, 17 questions for one video, I would pick around like three or four. Me, like the max I would do is four. That way I was able to go through all the videos at a, at a good pace and be able to feel like I'm actually getting somewhere with getting through the entire course of his pass fail course. So I would do that from eight to 10 and around 10 o'clock, I would do my first 15 minute break. And then from 10, 15 to about 1130 or so, I would do more high guru and do the same thing. I would copy and paste from the, from the video, the question IDs and paste them onto your world. At 1130 to 12, I would take my lunch then from 12 to 1, I would start my first new world block that focused on the things that I just learned. So that's a great way to like learn something and really solidify it is to go through the content of the videos, copy and paste those question IDs, do those questions, and that really reinforces what you learned that day. So I would go through 12 to 1, I would go through uh, U world, and I would do it on um, timed. I would do it in time mode because I just want to get in the rhythm of knowing this is the real deal. And the real deal is 40 questions, you get one hour per block, so you get one hour per 40 questions. So from 12 to one, I would do my first block of UWorld. From one to two, I would do my second block of UWorld with no breaks, just again, trying to mimic the real exam. And then at two o'clock, I would take my second break. Um, so around 2.15 to basically the end of my day, whether that be from 2.15 to 4.30 or 2.15 to 5, I would just go through and grade my self-assessments, or excuse me, I would grade my, my U world, and I would, get, um, I would get a bigger picture of every single question that I got wrong, 
and even some of the questions that I would get right. Because there are questions that you get right because you either guessed, because you got it right, but it was for the wrong reason, or for some other reason. So towards the end, I didn't really do that as much because I was more confident in my answers. But towards the beginning, I was going through every single question, and I really recommend that too. Um, obviously, you want to go through every single question that you get wrong, as well as all the other answer choices um, that were incorrect as well, and why they are incorrect, because those questions will show up later, but just worded differently, right? Um, and that was basically my day. You would notice that's about a nine hour day. Um, I always recommend students, please take one day off during your dedicated period, because this dedicated period is the most stressful time up to this point. It is the most stressful time in my life and it may or may not be the most stressful time for your life as well so you definitely want to take that one day off don't even think about um, studying don't don't study do something that you enjoy go on a hike go swimming go exercise do whatever just don't study you know your brain needs that time in order to heal and to make those connections and then you can go ahead and start again the next day for me i would take every sunday off i would fellowship with my family and then i would get back to it the next day on a monday um, in the beginning, how you want to do your MBMEs, you would want to do them at least one MBME every two weeks in the beginning. As you get closer to your step one exam date, you're going to want to take one exam every week. There's some people out there that take two exams in a week. My brain just isn't built that way. Um, I didn't do it. I mean, if you guys are able to do it, great, go for it. But for me, I just wasn't able to do two MBMEs, go through all of my wrong MBME questions because there's about 200 MBME questions per self-assessment and you're going to have to not only do those 200 but uh, the very next day uh, or even that same day go through that go through all your incorrects and for me it's just it was just very very difficult um, so in the beginning you're going to want to do at least one self-assessment every two weeks and then as you progress into your as you get closer to your MBME um, or to your USMLE step one exam date you're gonna to want to take one exam every week leading up to that. The week before your USMLE step one, I took, and I recommend it for you, I took the free 120 that is on the MBME's website. It's a free self-assessment. It is 120 questions long, three blocks, 40 questions each. Um, and it's really laid out like the real deal. Um, oh yeah, and by the way, the real deal, the USMLE step one, it's exactly formatted as uh, the U world, right? So uh, the way you take U world, it's in light mode. The way you take uh, U world is the way you're going to see the the real USMLE step one on 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 test day. All right, guys. So as promised, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my scores. And again, this video is just for transparency. I want you guys to know that it is possible to pass your step one exam uh, regardless of where your two years of basic sciences. Uh, was so without further ado let's take a look at our scores uh, as you can see I started off with a 41% correct on my U world self-assessment one not too good so if you're doing better already on your first U world self-assessment well you're already on a good start um, and about a month later I went ahead and did my um, second uh, self-assessment but it was my first NBME and I got a 56, so I was pretty, uh, I felt like I was in the, on the right track and I was just, I could only go up from there, right? Um, I was only doing practice questions at this point and no content review, hardly any. And then my second self-assessment score for the NBME, or my third self-assessment, my third self-assessment, uh, which was NBME uh, 30, I did it backwards, I did NBME 31, then NBME 30, and then NBME 29, so on and so forth. Um, I went ahead and got a 46 or a 45, 46%. Um, and I was devastated. So at this point, I was, you know, freaking out. I was, you know, getting a hold of my academic advisor. What can I do? And she just encouraged me to go through every single answer choice on my U world and just digest why it is incorrect or why it is correct. Um, so I did that as well as I got my high guru pass fail course, which is about $200. If you just go to his website, it was definitely worth it for me. So about a month later, I took my fourth self-assessment um, and I got a 56. So I went from a 46 to a, like a 56. So I got like 10, 10 points better. 
um, just from doing um, High Guru. And you can see after that, I'd never fell below a 55. It was always steady, steady, but I wasn't at that 60%, which was what you need to pass um, the real step exam. And finally, after I got through all of my pass, uh, after I got all of the High Guru pass fail course um, done, I was finally able to get my first passing score uh, consistently in um, in October. So once I got my passing score, I started doing one MVME per week and I can see just a steady stream of uh, passing scores. So the passing score that you guys wanna get to is at least 65% twice in order to sit for the real exam. Once I got a 63, I went ahead and took my free 120 and I got a 65% on the free 120. And then a week later, I took my step one exam and I passed. So that's it for my self-assessment. This video, again, it's for the people that are just, you know, average students, you know, those who are just getting by through med school, because I know med school is tough and it could be very mentally exhausting and draining. Um, that is why I'm here for. I want to encourage you guys and I want you guys to know like, okay, if this guy can do it from like a 41% starting, I can do it with whatever I started with. I want to encourage you guys to let you guys know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You guys are gonna open up that laptop and you are gonna see a pass when you open up your results from test day. Um, just know and trust the process. The best thing is just consistency, doing the same thing over and over again. Don't focus too much on the scores, but rather just focus on the process. Um, I know it sounds cliche, but I just want to encourage you guys. I took five months in order to start to study for this exam. Um, so wherever you guys are at, wherever you guys, um, yeah, wherever you guys are at, just know that uh, there is a lie at the end of the tunnel. And that's what I'm here for. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me um, either at my Instagram or at my personal email um, or even on this YouTube channel. Leave a comment, uh, leave a comment below to any questions that you might have. And make sure to give this video a like because that's how it's that's how it gets to the top of the the searching platform um because i know when i was studying i was just desperately looking for like specific scores and um i couldn't find any like good data out there uh, so just give this video a like so that other people are able to see this video and see what scores they need to get in order to pass step one and be able to see my example and being able to say hey if that guy can do it um, i can do it too so that's it for this video, you guys. Um, much love, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.